Bless the Lord. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. This is the word of the Lord as it comes to us from Matthew 9, 36 through to 38. We are assembled again in God's house to worship him on this very special occasion, harvest and thanksgiving service. And as we come together, we'd like to uh, in tune our hearts to worship. As we prepare ourselves, we are all going to be standing as we uh, do a refrain. And then we will all have our family prayer before he comes with the devotions. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Morning, indeed, everyone. We trust that we'll have a great day in the Lord. It's good to have you all here. And as we come together, we want to forget about ourselves, concentrate on Him, and worship Him. Let us uh, be standing, please, as we the prayer phrase. In God's
ourselves concentrated in worship him today and experience the pledges that they are forevermore in his presence. Let us invite his presence and uh, ask God to dwell with us today. It's a very special occasion and we certainly need his presence and his blessings upon us today. Let us all pray at his help. Hallelujah. Gracious God, thank you for this powerful prayer. You've taken us, God, from our summer. You've taken us, God, from the spirit of death as we were. Not aware of what happened around us. Oh God, we enjoyed the right and set through many dangers, toils, and snares. You have taken us safely to your house of worship. We pray today that you will be with us, God. We pray for your outpouring. Oh God, such as never been experienced. Oh God, send forth the latter rain upon us. Bless of your heart today. Oh God, we pray that our worship will be found acceptable in your sight. Oh God, nothing will be done of some today, but all will be done to your glory and to your honor. Oh God, so that you will be glorified. Oh God, as we seek and bless today. Fill us, oh God, and you. Revive your work and pray. Oh God, let preach be made easy today. We bless the songs we sing. Oh God, prayers, the scripture, the lesson. Oh God, those in far hands who have a heart and a mind to be here, be with them today. We pray. Him to them, he gave it the privilege 
to become sons and daughters of God. So we are here, we are here to worship today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, let us stand together while we sing for our two opening song, 205 from the banner hymn. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith and beauty. Beautiful words, wonderful words of life. Let us stand together. Why do we have that one boy? It's two, zero, five.
Hallelujah. In, when we were even not thinking about it, when we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Praise God. It's a privilege, it's an opportunity. Hallelujah. Great opportunity. Hallelujah. Find the greatest miracle. Hallelujah. That one could think of. To know that just believing, just calling on the name of Jesus Christ, you would have life eternal, life forever. Praise God. So we just want to thank him for there was a price, there was a debt that we owe. Hallelujah. That was owed and we couldn't pay it. Praise God. But I hear the songwriter said there was a time on earth when in the book of heaven, an old account was standing for sin yet unforgiven. And my name was at the top. And many things below. But you know something? I went up to the keeper. Hallelujah. And I fixed it up. Hallelujah. And because of that, I'm on my way rejoicing. Hallelujah. Let us turn our Bibles to uh, St. Luke chapter 19. St. Luke 19, and we'll read a few verses here. Bless the Lord as soon as we find it and let us read it. Praise the Lord. Let us read our early verses from verse 29 to verse 44. And it came to pass when he was come nigh to Bethany and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go ye in the village over against you, in which I will enter. You shall find a cold time, whereon yet never man sat, loosing and bringing thither. And if any man ask you, where do ye lose him? Thus shall he say unto him, Because the Lord hath need of him. And they that were sent went their way, and found even as he had said unto them. And as they were losing the cold, the owners thereof said unto them, Why lose ye the coat? And they said, The Lord has need of him. And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the coat, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Say, if thou hast known, even thou, that this is the best of the things which belong unto thy peace, for now they are hid from thy hands. For the day shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side. Let us do 24 verse together. And he shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in me one stone upon another, because of the Lord is not the time of the situation. Bless the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. And I say to God, we do this prayer refrain. Touching Jesus is all that really matters. Praise God. We are going to be asking uh, Brother Buckley to pray uh, for, for our prayer for us today. Touching Jesus is all that we
grateful, oh God, we can say amen, oh God. And Father God, as we are here this morning, oh God, we invite you, oh God, just to tap and knock with us this morning, oh God. Father, as we come before you, oh God, we are asking you this morning to create in us, oh God, a clean heart, oh God. And Father God, as we are here this morning, oh God, I ask at this time, oh God, to touch from the pulpit to the people, oh God. Father God, we lift you up one more time, dear Jesus. We tell you how great are you, Lord, this morning.
you unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me. And he gave the answer. He said, I shall take the cup of salvation and I shall call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. Because he is indeed great. He's been so good to us. We can never imagine. It's beyond our understanding. God is not good. You only need to look around you, brothers and sisters, and see some of the desolation and destruction that takes place right under our eyes, under our noses, as it were. And so we really have to give God thanks. When we are spirit, there's no man that does good, no, not one. And certainly, we are not any better than others, so that we can indeed come into his house. We have a lot to be thankful for. Okay, today, as you've been told before, we're doing our fasting, our um, harvest and Thanksgiving service. Uh, it's a couple of things together. Today is Palm Sunday also. You'd have heard the theme from the devotions led by Deacon. Uh, the Palm Sunday as Jesus prepared for the cross and the passion that followed and his death, his crucifixion and the death and burial. Um, I'm sure as the days go by, we will hear more about that. Um, so today is Palm Sunday on the one hand, and today is traditionally uh, Women's Sunday also, but it's also our Harvest and Thanksgiving service, Thank and this is where we're focusing on today. The theme of today's service is the Lord of the Harvest. Amen. Amen. The Lord of the Harvest. Amen. And we've heard before that Jesus, when he looked upon the multitude, he saw that they were fainting. They were like helpless people, depressed. You know? And he asked them, said, listen, what you guys need to do is pray the Lord of the harvest. Because he realized that the harvest is plenteous. And the laborers are few. So you will need to pray the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers. We need laborers around here. We need people to proclaim the gospel. We need people to tell the story. I remember when my mama and all the older brethren used to talk about the old time religion. Our people used to run with the message of salvation. Yeah, we need some people who can carry the message along. Amen. To go into the communities, into the byways and the highways. And to tell young men especially who seem to be carefree. Have no consideration about God. Care about nothing. But time is short. And no wonder the Bible made special emphasis on youth. He said, young man, I call upon you because you are strong. Amen. And so we need to use the strength of the youth to God's glory. Amen. So we need to pray the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into the vineyard. And oh, how we need help around here. Amen. But it's really good to see so many people here today. I'm really uh, very thankful um, to see you all. Some familiar faces and some faces that we've not seen for some time. Um, and so we're going to make a very special um, mention at this time. We'll ask our PR representative, Sister Barrett. Um, I'm sorry, Sister Sophia Henry, <laughs> to come forward and do the welcome and recognition. Praise the, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today, visiting with us, we have Mr. Richard Nelson. Just wave your hand when I call your name. Mr. Richard, Richard Johnson. Ricardo. Ricardo Johnson. Give him a David and welcome. Mr. Kamara Mitchell. Damian Brand. Richard. Michelle, we have Miss Nadine Crooks, 
and we have our very own Mrs. Maria Nelson. We call her Mrs. Nelson. We have also worshiping with us today Alani Hoens, Tana Wilson, Shalita Gordon, Mr. Delroy Harris. And we have one of our very own. We haven't seen her in a while, and she's here. She pays us a visit today. We are always glad to see you, Latoya Harris. Praise the Lord. We are coming out today. And we just want you to just feel free to worship God today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, please listen to the following notices and reminders. There will be a Youth Leaders Enrichment Seminar on April 6, 2022 at Old Harbor Road. And you can, you can speak with Sister Shaw and our pastor for more information. Church of God of Prophecy Manchester Children Ministry presents Convention 2022 under the theme, Listen Up, Children's Voice Matter. On Saturday, May 14, 2022, at 9.30 a.m. at Levy Lane. Women's Ministry Prior Breakfast will be on May 21st, 2022. Also, Women's Ministry Ladies Retreat will be held on June 24, 24th to 26th. Parish Ladies Day, August 13, 2022, and the Ladies Day of November 2022. And you can speak with Sister Grant for more information on these. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Right. Also, I just announced Minister Dr. Maloney Wall, pastor of the Whole Harbor Road Church, went to be with the Lord on April 8th. Also, Deacon Dillian from St. Catherine and Sister Francella Bryan from South Clarendon died on April 4th, 2022. And let us remember to keep the family families in prayer. All right, so youths and young adults are asked to remain for 10 minutes after church. So that youths, youths and young adults, they're asked to remain for 10 minutes after church. These are the notices and reminders. Please bear them in mind. Have a wonderful afternoon. Yes. so enthused that you will want to come back again. All right, well, thank you all, everyone who's been here. I, um, I, I heard of, uh, I'm not sure it's Nadine, Nadine Crooks, but I'm aware of uh, Reverend Dr. Nicole Crooks who's here with us today. Um, that's Maya's daughter. You see them sitting down there um, together. We are mindful also that there are some of our brothers and sisters who, are, who have not been very well. And um, we see mom is out today. She was doing really very well. Praise the Lord. Praise well. We see brother Morgan, who we haven't seen for a while. He wasn't doing well. We see brother Robert, who was not here with us last week. tell you this, that there may be others who were not well last week and uh, much better today. Amen. Um, we, yes, we are going to be uh, uh, having a very special prayer today. Pray of thanksgiving and a 
prayer of healing. Yes? How many people believe in divine healing? Yeah. 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 I, I tell you something, brothers and sisters. I'm not sure if you hear me clearly. Is it coming across? Yeah. 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 I tell you something, you know. Jesus declared that greater works than he did will we also be able to do. You know, I don't think we have really pushed ourselves to the level to experience what God has for us. I think we put so much limitations on ourselves and limitations on God. Hello, somebody. I think we've limited and we put God in a little box and say this is what he can do and this is what we want him to do. But have we ever really thought of the greater works? Greater works. And what was he doing? He went about healing the sick. Raising the dead. He made the blind to see. He made the crippled man walk. He made the dumb talk. Come on now. So if we, according to his work, are able to do greater works, then we shouldn't have so many sick people around us. with evangelists, people who are preaching and giving the alarm because great works will be able to be able to do. But you know, our faith sometimes stand in the way. In our faith, we tell ourselves it's impossible. And we often say, if I were to shout and let God, let go and let God, my friend is going to be looking at me strangely. And somebody's going to say, hey, hey, what is he up to? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's true. But you know what the disciples did after Jesus left? After he empowered them, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And he went, he did say to them that, tarry here until you be endued with power for service. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost, the Bible said. And they spoke with boldness, with authority. So they couldn't care who they saw. But they went about boldly proclaiming the word of God. And they too did some great works. They saw a man who was begging all his life. And the man saw them. And was expecting a coin or two. Especially when John said, look at us. But he said, hey, I have not silver and gold, but what I have in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The Bible tells me that that man jumped up. And he walked for the first time. Today, if you're sick today, if you can muster the strength to come up here, please do it and take that walk of faith. Right? If you can muster the strength, if you can't, just indicate that you are where you are and you believe that something is going to happen. And we pray for you today. It's 291, and Deacon tells me, and we're going to be doing that song. The great physician now is near. 
that sympathize in Jesus. Are we ready, church? Yes, Are we ready, church? Yes, Lord. Lord, please join with me as we sing the song. The great tradition now is near. We sing a couple of verses. And um, those of you who need prayer, again, if you need a prayer, it's a, it's a healing session we talked about here. Um, those who are not well in spirit, in mind, in body, in soul, physically and mentally, spiritually. Yes? Those of you who are emotionally disturbed, come on over because the great physician is here. Somebody raise that song.
Where's the Denise prayer today? God bless you, Lord.
blessing on the offering for us today. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, and the work may put to it may done in your honor and glory of your name. We tell you thanks in Jesus. Thank you, Kanye. You. you may be seated, please. Okay, we, we are um, in lieu of our praise and worship today, we're going to be having some special selections. Um, so we're going to be having those, and after which. You will hear our past, so we'll introduce to us the speaker of the day. Um, uh, so we will be listening to the word of God as we go through in this our harvest Thanksgiving service. Uh, just to remind you, the theme that we're working with today is that is the Lord of the harvest. And we've heard the Lord of the harvest, he actually invited his disciples to ask him, so that you will send laborers into the vineyard. Again, I'd like to say welcome. A few more persons have walked in after we said that. And so it's very nice to have you all here today. God bless you as you come into his house. And we hope that you'll be inspired to come again as we worship with us in this uh, Davidton Church of God of Prophecy. Pastor Howard Fox and the brethren, we are all, yeah, always happy to have you here with us today. Um, for the special singing today, we're going to be having Sister Collins, Sister Knight, and um, Edwards. Uh, I think we also have Sister Barrett on the list. Uh, if we, we have time to get all those in, we'd be happy to take them. I'm not sure in what order. Any special order? No? All right. So, where is Sister Knight? Where is she? Yes. Good to have you. All right, so this night is going to bless our hearts to have a special offering, special singing, selection, and then we we'll take it from there.
us to know something. That's why he did it twice. The God of the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, they make it right. God of the good times, is still God in the bad times. Amen. So here's a message for us. God bless your hearts, sis, for that beautiful song. Uh, as we continue to uh, worship, we're going to have another special singing. Uh, Sister Nordia will do it. Nordia Edwards will sing for us today. These are the women um, representing the women's mission. Come on, women. Let's make her welcome.
is. Because this is a Palm Sunday. This is when he was making his way. Amen. And the people were all excited that he was about to restore Jerusalem. But there was a bigger plan that Jesus himself knew because his father revealed it to him. But he was making a way to go to Hill Golgotha where his blood was shed. Now that's the song. His blood will carry me all the way. Through his shed blood, there is a remission of sins. We are ever so grateful to God for this glorious opportunity. It came at great cost, brothers and sisters. Great cost. He suffered. He suffered. He humiliated. Bled. And died. He died the death of a common criminal. But that blood will carry us. Oh, thank you, Sister Lordy, for that beautiful song. We're going to be having one now from Sister Collins as the ladies represent. And then following with that, we'll have a duet.
feel whole and feeble. Crisis may be gone. Strength may be gone. Everything take place. But you know one thing? Defeat is one word I won't use. Because I'm heading for a city whose savior, whose builder is God. And by the grace of God, assisting one like me, I must reach there. God bless you as you do so in Jesus' name.
Good to see all the new faces in this house today. Praise God with us in our Harvest Festival service. And you know, as I sat at my seat and I look around, I see a great harvest of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the thought came to me that while you are preparing a harvest, many seeds are planted. And not every seed will come at the same time. Amen. Amen. Praise God. But one thing we know for sure is that a reaping day is coming. A day of harvest is coming where everything will be reaped. Praise God. And it don't matter which soil you're planted on. Glory be to God. You are expected today to bring forth fruit and much fruit. Glory be to God in the house of the Lord. So it's good to have all of us that are here this morning. But I ask a question today. What seed are he? Amen. And what soil are you planted in? Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm not going to be the preacher for today. Bless the Lord. Brother Buckley is getting himself ready to come. Praise God. And we want to pray for him that the Lord will speak through him. That the, York, the Lord will use him as an oracle. Glory be to God. As a conduit. That his word can flow through freely. We don't want any blockage in the way. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so we ask the Lord today for deliverance. We ask him for strength. We ask him for power. We ask him for authority. We ask him for clarity today. That as the word goes forth, it will germinate. It will fall on good grounds. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And it will bring forth much fruit for the day of harvest. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Stand with me, church. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb. Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb. My heart sings his praise again. We recognize, Lord, that there is none like you. 
You are indeed great, almighty God, throughout the world, throughout all the earth. There is none like you. And so we place you high above us else today. Father, as your man, uh, servant is about to come to deliver your word, we pray, God, that you will anoint him from the crown of his head unto the sole of his feet. We pray, God, that you will speak through him like never before. Mighty God, let your words flow freely, almighty oh, God, and importantly, it will fall upon good grounds. Father God, we ask today, oh God, that he will give himself to you and no one else, mighty God, because he is, oh God, in your hands. He is the clay and you are the potter. Work upon him now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And we receive him through the power of the Holy Ghost. Church received to speak to you today. Brother Buckley, in care of the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Let's continue to worship the Lord. Continue to bless his holy name. First, I would like to acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit, which is alive and well with us today. Praise God. Secondly, I want to greet my host, Pastor Howard Fox. Deacon. And you will be virgin visiting friends. Greeting in the mighty name of Jesus. It's afford me a great privilege to be standing here another Sunday to bring the word. Praise God. This morning, I want to, you to turn with me to Matthew 9, reading from verse 35 to verse 38. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on him. Because they fainted. He was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered aboard as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray he therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he, he will send forth laborers into his hearts. Praise God. Hallelujah. This morning I'm here to speak to you on a topic. The Lord of the harvest. Praise God. In all of this transition of season, celebration of harvest, and preparing for the season, it's such a good feeling. I have been meditating on this theme of harvest in the scripture. For such, for much time I spent in the scripture pondering this issue. And one thing I have come up with for the harvest season is simple. True that God needs to be put in his place. I realized as I was looking into the word into Matthew 9 and it tells us that Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogue proclaiming the good news of the kingdom healing every disease and sickness. The Bible tells us that when he saw the crowd he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. 
Praise God. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers in the harvest field. And as I read the text, something jumped out of me that I have never fully appreciated before. This wasn't the actual context or the content, but a simple title, the Lord of the Harvest. And this is precisely where I saw that God needed to be put in his place when it comes to my own life. When I look at the symbolical meaning of harvest in the scripture, it encompasses two main areas. God provision for us and God blessing for others. As we celebrate harvest on a nominal, nominal basis once per year, we experience the spirit of harvest all the time. Each day that we go to our job and earn a paycheck, we experience harvest. Each time we receive love from our families and those in our lives, we experience harvest. Each time we experience the closeness of God in a way that fills us spiritually, we experience harvest. Anytime we are filled, we experience harvest. Harvest then is something that we experience once a year, but something that we experience on a daily basis. These are the words Jesus used, and they are so important. The harvest we experience on a daily basis, they don't belong to us. They belong to the God of the harvest. Amen. Praise God. Our jobs belong to the Lord of the harvest. The money we earn belongs to the Lord of the harvest. Amen. Our spouse and our children belong to the Lord of the harvest. Amen. It's all his this morning. Yes. When we put God in his place, his rightful place, we recognize him as the Lord of our harvest. Amen. We recognize him. We recognize that he is the one who gave us hands to work. That he is the one who supply our provision. Yeah. That our family is actually his family. Yeah. Which rightfully belongs to him. Amen. When we recognize the Lord of the harvest for who he is. For who he is in our life. We must also embrace the fact that while in part of our harvest is something he gives to meet our needs. And also he used us to bless others. Yes. All those wonderful things in our life that we all that we give thanks for. Those things exist in large part to be a blessing to the world around us. Praise God. One of the clearest illustrations used by our Lord to explain the condition of the loss and the duty of saved to share the means of being saved. It is found in the it is found in the praise God, praise God. It is found in the analogy of the right field, right harvest and the need for a harvest worker. Praise God. Praise God. Since so few of us live on the farm these days, we may not immediately catch the significance of the teaching. In the days of Jesus, many live off the land and grow their own crop. So they understand clearly what Jesus was saying. Imagine with me a field of vegetable ready to be picked. The crop, the crop going right. In that case, the vegetable must be picked immediately or they will be lost for goods. Each vegetable is worth money to the farmer. And 
he is anxious to get them picked and out to the market before they got wrapped. Now imagine that he called on his workers to go quickly into the field to gather the crop. But instead of moving out to reap the crop, the field hands sit down waiting for their next meal are complaining about the condition on the farm. Needless to say, the farmer would be looking for new workers. Now think of something more, far, far more critical. Consider the field in this passage as the soul of man and woman who will perish if they are not brought to the saving grace of Jesus Christ in a timely manner. Christ is Lord of the field and of the harvest and he knows that each soul is danger of being rotten, being lost. The soul are ripe and must be harvested now. He call on those who are the field hands, the members of the family of this church to go out and harvest the crop. What do the field hands do? Many of us sit around waiting for the Lord of the harvest to bless us with more spiritual food. Sometimes we complaining about the things we don't like on the farm. The Lord of the harvest is grieving beyond measures. That is the picture we have before us in this passage. The owner of the field is God himself. So we ask the Lord of the harvest to toss out worker into the field before it's too late. Note with me three important points which I trust will cause us to become a worker in the field of soul which is ripe for harvest. Praise God. And the first one is the passion in the harvest work. Jesus was filled with passion for soul. He said of himself, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. His passion took him all the way to the, cal to the cross of Calvary, where he laid down his life for every sin of this world. Now, note with me the visible sign of his passion. He had the eyes to see. First, he had the eyes to see the need. The Bible tells us that Jesus often lift his eyes and look with compassion on the people as being sheep without a shepherd. But sadly, the eyes of the servant are often fixed on personal things and earthly things rather than that which is of the interest of their Savior. Christ had his eyes fixed on heavenly and eternal things. He saw the suffering of sin and cares about each person. He is the same yesterday, today and forevermore. He still look out in the world with his eyes of love and desire that worker being passed out into the field before these souls perish. The word of God tell us for God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He is calling on us to lift our eyes to see the harvest before us and to get busy about sharing the gospel with our generation. I don't say that it is hard enough to, to witness and win soul that it was then Jesus was crucified for sharing his message of grace and salvation his disciples was put to death with the exception of Judas who commit suicide so sharing our faith may not make us popular with some people but our goal is to please God Jesus see our last world and care for each one. And he's calling us to care as well. 
and to do something about it. Not only does Jesus have the eyes to see, but notice he had the heart to feel. Jesus was moved with compassion in his heart for the lost in the world. The face moved with compassion means to feel deeply within about something and to be moved to do something concrete about those feelings. Amen. When Jesus weep at Lazarus' tomb, the people stand by saying, see how he loved him. Yes, yes Jesus have a love that glow and show. Praise God. We will never witness for Christ unless we are close enough to Jesus to feel as he feels and to care as he cares. When the human has heart as fixed and pleased himself and getting things, there is little room for caring about those dying without Christ. When we draw close to Christ, we will feel his heart beat and sense his love for the last world. Amen. Amen. Now let me share something important with you in regarding the scene and feeling the lostness of our generation. In a world where the secular society has set their boundary or lack thereof for moral behavior, it is easy for the Christian community to become negative and even hateful towards sinners. If we are not careful, we become like the Pharisees that Jesus confronted again and again in his ministry while on the earth. Because of their self-righteousness, they care little for those struggling in sin and dying and prepare to meet God. They set themselves up to judge rather than to love believers who were serving a loving God. Listen, church, our duty as Christian is not to make Jamaica or the world more moral, but rather our calling from God is to bring people to faith in Jesus Christ. We must see the last souls of men and women through the eyes of Jesus, through the eyes of the love and compassion. We must have the mind to understand. The word to see in the text come from a Greek word means, meaning by the implication to know. Jesus did not just look at the people, but rather he, he saw them through eyes of love. He did not just see what they were wearing or gaze at their station in life, but rather he looked within and saw their needs. Amen. He understood the condition they were in. Yes. He saw what sin was doing to them Amen. and what it meant to their eternity. Yes. The word used to describe the fainting of the people living in sin has been faith as if their skin had been torn. Jesus was not speaking of the outward appearance, but on the inward pain. It, it was not the law that hurt them. It was the sin they had committed that created the fainting within. In our world, you know, in other words, the law of God was like an alcohol and a wound. Rather bringing relief, it create, created even more pain. Yeah, that's right. Amen. The Pharisees pour out the alcohol, but only bring. Praise God. Only bring agony and resentment from the sinful population. The open wound was still there. Yes. Jesus came and poured on grace. Yes. And the palm in Gideon that healed the wounded soul. He came to heal and to forgive. He came to bring peace to the heart and heal to the soul. We who are saved know 
that Jesus did not come to condemn us, but rather he came to convert us. He did not come to paralyze us, but rather he came to pardon us. He did not come to forsake us, but rather he came to forgive us. Our minds often judge people by the outward appearance. We can easily get caught up in climbing a social ladder or gain our esteem from our home or income. There is nothing wrong with success in the world. However, success is dangerous if we lose the sight of the hurting person right in front of us. No person became a harvest witness who didn't make up their own mind. If we have the mind of Christ, we will determine to share our faith with others. Nothing makes us more like Jesus than seeking to help save that which is lost. To help bring those who are unsaved to the Savior. We must consider one more thing, the will to work. Praise God. Why we don't take the harvest of souls seriously? It's because we don't have the will to work in God's vineyard. That is our problem. I hear of a story about a pastor man who pastor a church for numbers of years. He said that he didn't have the spirit, the spiritual gift to be a witness. Someone share that there is a list in the Bible, the gift of evangelists, with which every Christian does not possess. However, every Christian is, is to witness and work towards the harvest of soul and can win soul to Christ. He just could not accept the fact until one day he forced himself to show up at a visitation night. He went out to see a man who was lost. A man who would not even talk to him because he was a pastor. In fact, that same man had driven him off his porch when he tried to visit him. But that layman knew the man and he was able to talk with him. But amazingly, within a few months, the same man that said he would never be saved, the same man have a hard heart, came to Jesus and was born again. Amen. The witness of a man who said he could never witness was the answer. Amen. Listen to me. Some of us who said we can, can never witness are the very one God has chosen to speak with someone who is lost. Perhaps none, no, no one else can reach that person. We must have the faith and commitment to do what God asks us to do. It all begins when one person has the will to work in God's vineyard. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the second point I want to look at is the harvest work. The believers is the one to do the harvest work. A strange story appeared in Mark 5 regarding our Lord. He was confronted by a man possessed with legion of demons. He cast the demon out of the man and into the herd of the swine. The swine run straight away over the hills and into the water where they were drowned. But two prayers were offered after the swine run over the mountainside. The first prayer, the people who owned the swine came out of their nearby city and prayed for Jesus to leave their course. They asked him to depart. But strangely, Jesus answered their prayer of the evil ones and denied the prayer of the deliver man. Why Jesus did not deliver the poor the demon possessed man just to make him comfortable. He brought him out of the kingdom of the devil and into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. He meant to you to make this man 
man useful. He knew that this man, the deliver man, could go back to his home and share what God had done. Right. Imagine the testimony this man had. Amen. Wherever he go, he could tell of the awful nights among the tomb. Yes, right. He could relate to the experience of the shackle and the chain which he had held him. Yes. He could show the scar where he had cut himself with stone. Yes. Then with tears and joy, he could tell of the precious Lord Jesus who had come to him and deliver him out of his sorrow and madness. Somehow I believe that man must have told his story a hundred of times. Crowds who would run to listen to his testimony. And so it is with us church, we must tell what Jesus has done for us. Our story may be is as important. You see, Jesus did not take the redeemed man with him because he intended to send him out to be a witness. That's right. Amen. It could be the same thing with us. Jesus had not called us to be with him, with him in heaven just as yet because he has work for us to do Amen. where we are. Amen. Are we doing that church? Every believer have a story to tell of salvation and grace of the joy we know in serving and living for Jesus. When we look at the peace we have through his presence with us and that is why we have two to three hours of public worship a week in his house. But, this, but we spend the bulk of the week in the world where the mission field is and that is where he sent us to share our story of salvation with others note also the bounty within the harvest work Jesus pointed out that the harvest was ripe and plentiful the impact of Jesus word relates that the harvest is far more vast few workers because the harvest is so great. The harvest is greater today than ever before. There is more people around us without Christ now than ever before. Yet it may yet in many of our churches we baptize less people each year. The harvest growing but sadly the harvesters are declining. There is a bountiful crop out there and we must get in the field and labor while it is yet there. For when night come, when no one, none of us can work in, in this earthly field for him again. Now let me share something with you. We know some people out there don't believe there is a God. Then there are others who simply admit that they do not know for sure if there is a God. But reaching this person with the gospel of Jesus is our task. And there is a group of people in our age that ever more troublesome. And they simply don't care in not one way. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter to them one way or the other. As Christians, we must have Jesus so real in our life that this person will have to take note of it and consider the idea that there is a God and his son is Jesus. We must also consider the burden of a harvest worker. One can almost hear the burden of our Lord as he look out into the field of human life and see so few helping to bring them in. We must redouble our efforts to reach the lost. I heard a woman talking about her experience of seeing her husband after he came from one of our Middle East war. He was terribly wounded he has lost one arm. Yes. 
one leg, one eye. Instead of seeing her life as now being burdened with caring for him every day, she was moved with he was moved with love and compassion. She never see it as something she would stop with, but rather as a great opportunity to commit her love in an even greater way to her husband. God bless that dear wife, that precious woman. We need to have that love when we see our broken and hurting world within a, without a burden. We will sit idle by and miss our opportunity. When we see this situation, we must find fall into we must not fall into the trap of criticizing the problem and the people, but rather to determine that Jesus is the only answer for our times. We have the answer, and the answer is Jesus. We must have the burden to take that message to our world. We must look at the prayer for the harvest worker and that is the third point I want to look at. We need to understand that the harvest of soul does not belong to us. It is the sovereign Lord who owns the field. It is he who has sent us out in them. Jesus said as the Father sent me send so send I you. Jesus said all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always. Even to the very age. Reaching out to people who need grace and forgiveness in Jesus is actually his church doing his work. We are responsible to him in our duty is not to the lost, but to the sovereign Lord who saved us and called us to serve in the harvest field of human soul. If we are obedient, we will be busy in, the, in this matter of witnessing for him by sending into the harvest does he send us out into the field note that the great commission is a command and not a suggestion it's us it is an obligation and not just an option we are not encouraged to go we are called to go a moment ago we look at the man who pleaded to go with Jesus and was sent back home to share his witness. We know that it is better and more honorable to go in the service than to simply sit near to Jesus. We cannot make people come to Christ, but we can urge them. We can plead with them. We can help them along. There could be someone here this morning that you know to be lost or someone who had never made a public decision for Christ. You should gently let them know that you are willing to walk forward with them. When they are ready, the hand and the shoulder may be all that is needed to make the difference. Do you remember how frightening you were when you stepped out for Christ? It's a bit intimidated. A friend by one side can help relieve that anxiety. There could be someone here this morning who know that another is praying for you, but they are not present to urge you. It could be a praying mother that remember that you remember it could be a witnessing friend who has urged you to respond to Jesus this morning. Oh, as surely as a real hand would urge you, let your prayer and hope call you to the altar today. 
Yet another could be here who has a great urging of all. It could be that the Lord of glory has been calling you and you know that within yourself, you know it is, the, it is his voice down in your heart. He is telling you that he died for you and rose from the dead just for you. He is calling you because he cares for you and does not wish for you to perish. Listen to him and obey and come to him today. And as I close, there is a world out there that need to know that Jesus is real. They need to know that Jesus made the difference. They need to know that Jesus, in, they need to know Jesus in a personal way. The harvest is plenteous, but the workers are few. Would you pray to the Lord of the harvest for a worker to be sent? If you do, don't be surprised when he answered your prayer by passing out into that ripe and ready harvest. There are some of us here today who want to be witness and you try occasionally, but you find it difficult. Remember this, you are not called to be successful, but to be faithful. Amen. Why don't you just come forward this morning, bow here and renew your willingness to go into the field of harvest and work. He is calling workers. Can you hear him this morning? Amen. How many are listening? Oh, I pray many will listen this morning and will respond to him by making a new public commitment to be a harvest worker in the field of the world that is ripe up for harvest. Let us respond now, church. Each one, come as God calls us. God bless you all. Praise God. Praise God. Worship the Lord, somebody. The Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for his word today. That has gone forth with power and conviction. The invitation has been extended. The harvest truly is plenteous. The word is a few. I'm going to ask everybody where you are. Just bow your heads right where you are. Everybody right now. Just bow your heads where you are. Whilst there's a call for those of the faith to pray the Lord of their harvest to send forth laborers, there's a call for those who've not yet been known, not yet met Christ. You too can get into the harvest field and become witnesses to Christ. So as you ponder today, as you heard the word, and as you think of your own future, I'd like for you to make a decision right where you are as you know, bow your heads as you concentrate on Christ only and if you are willing to accept Christ today just raise your hands nobody look around right now just raise your hand right now where you are if you're willing to accept Christ to move into the harvest field where you can begin to work as Jesus looked on with compassion. The souls of men were fainting and oppressed. He was worried for the people who were lost without hope. Fractured, fractious life, wretched life. He was moved with compassion and asked the church to pray so that workers will come into the vineyard. I see that hand over there. God bless you. Is there somebody else who will make a decision for Christ right now? We'd like to pray with you. We're not going to be singing a song right now. But we'd like to pray with you. So that the Lord of the harvest will accept your praise offering, your offering. And make you a witness for him. The word has gone forth. And you've heard the word. 
God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And if you believe today, you will not perish, but have everlasting life. There's a song which says, when in a better land, before the bar we stand, how deeply grieved our souls will be if any lost one there should cry in deep despair, you'll never mention him to me. We're mentioning Christ right now. So apart from that hand over there, we see God bless you, says, is there somebody else? Okay. We're going to be praying for you right now. Right now. We're going to be praying for you. And, uh, we'd ask you know, heads bowed just the same. Sister, lift your face in Christ. Oh, gracious God. We thank you for your word today. We thank you for your man's servant. And God, we come to you on behalf of your daughter who has raised her hands to accept you. We pray now in the name of Jesus that you will take her as she is and make her whole. I pray God that her life will be different as of today because she has raised her hands in faith and that she become a witness for you. You've asked us, God, to pray the Lord of the harvest. We are praying now, Lord, and the church is in session. We pray believing that you, the Lord of the harvest, will bring even that one soul today so that she too will be a witness for you and to bring others to you. Bless the rest of the congregation right now. Oh, God, those who are all take between two opinions, I pray now in the name of Jesus that you will rest upon their consciences, their hearts. Knock on the door of their hearts, God. And even at the end of the service that somebody else will cry out and yield to your word. Bless us abundantly, we pray thee in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're coming down, uh, brothers and sisters, and I really appreciate your patience. Uh, we have a baby to be dedicated. This is going to be done very briefly. Um, you know, I'm sure Jesus would not be pleased if we say, go and come again. All right, so pastor will come forward now this time. And do that quick dedication before we wrap up. Hallelujah.
heard his name. The Bible, they have never read. They know not what the Savior said. Suffer the little children to come unto me. Praise God. And the last verse in that song says, How soon may the heathen of every tribe and nation fulfill thy blessed word and cast their idols all away. Oh, shine upon them from above and show thyself a God of love. Teach the little children to come unto me. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's indeed a joyous occasion today as we stand, praise God, as a people to join with mother and father of little Caden, the Mari Gale, in our midst today as they present him to the Lord. It's always good to see the fathers Amen. standing side by side Amen. with the mother. Because sometimes, you know, what fathers do, they shy away from some of their responsibilities. So they plant the seed and they run. But it's good to have you, Daddy, standing with us today, representing, you're representing, glory be to God, as a good father. And we appreciate that of you that it's the first good example that you set and you're setting for a little Caden as you bring him before the Lord. He might be young today and he won't remember this occasion, but I'm sure there may be some pictures that you can show him when he's of age that yes, you stood with him as you brought him. Follow him, mommy, to present him to the Lord. Praise God. And so, it's a big responsibility that God has placed upon you as parents today. Praise God. Children are a heritage of the Lord. It's a gift that God has given to you. Glory be to God. It's not your skillfulness, daddy. While the girl, Caden, is here. And mommy, it's not your, you know care, an extra care that you have put in to make sure that he is brought to be here today. It's all because of the goodness of God. Amen. Praise God. One scripture says that before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew you. Amen. And I say that to say today that before Caden was formed in your womb, God knew that he would be born. And so it's not by chance today, but it's a gift from Almighty God. Praise God. And so as you bring him here today to be dedicated, to be given back to the Lord, glory be to God, we are still in the, the season of COVID-19. Praise God. And there are still a few protocols that we continue to observe because we know that COVID-19 is still here with us. Although we are seeing the end of the of it. Praise God and we continue to trust God. Glory be to God that he will take us through safely. Glory be to God. So I won't be holding little Caden in my hands today but nonetheless it will be a dedication upon his life. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Stand with me church in agreement as I pray this prayer of dedication upon him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, we come before your presence today, God. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. We thank you, Lord, that you are indeed God and you care. We thank you, Lord, that you will never leave us, nor will you ever forsake us. But you will be there with us, O oh God, as you promised to the very end of the age. And so God, we come to you today, standing upon this premise. Almighty God, believe in your word. Oh God, that you will do what you say you will do. Almighty God, our faith looks up to you, O Lamb of Calvary. O Spirit of the living God, we thank you for this special 
and grand occasion, mighty God, that we can stand before you, God, bowing our hearts in penitence at your throne. Almighty God, we thank you today, O oh God, that you have allowed little Canaan, Damari Gale, to be brought into this world. Almighty oh God, it's not of any skillfulness of the parents, nor the doctors, Almighty oh God, but it's all a miracle by your hand today. And so, Lord, we thank you for him. We give you praise. We give you glory. Oh God, we give you honor. Oh God, because you are indeed worthy. We thank you, Lord God, for the parents that you have given to him. Almighty oh, God, you, oh God, have given, oh God, little children, parents, because they need guidance as they grow up. Oh God, they need somebody, oh God, who can stand in the gap for them. Someone who can represent them and represent them well. And so Lord, as the parents stand before you today, oh God, we want to thank you for them, Lord. Almighty oh, God, I want to present them into your care today. Into your hands, Lord, I commit them. Almighty oh, God, hallelujah. Oh Lord, let them understand today that if there's anything lacking in them, they can look to you, God. They can ask of you, Lord, and you will give it to them. If they are lacking wisdom, mighty God, as to how to care for their little child, oh God, they can turn to you, oh Lord, who can guide them step by step. Mighty God, I present them into your care today. Oh Lord, mighty God, that they will come to know you and the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your suffering. Almighty oh, God, that at the end they will be made conformable unto your death, mighty God. They need you in order to guide little, oh God, Canaan, the Marigale. They need you in their life to give them direction. Oh God, as your word declare, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Let your word, Lord, be a lamp unto their feet. I pray, God, that you will draw them close to you. Oh, mighty God, that you will, oh God, give them salvation. Mighty God, that they will know the power that is in you, mighty God. I pray, Lord, for their, oh God, that you will provide for them. Oh God, that they will never be in want. Mighty God, that they will have Oh God, what it takes to cure up and to bring up a child in this world. We know, God, that things are expensive. Oh God, but your economy, it never runs dry. Oh mighty God, you said in your words that the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to you, God. And I pray at this time, Lord, that you will supply their needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus, your son. Oh God, let them never be in want, Lord. Let their store rooms, their store baskets never be empty. Oh God, that little Canaan, Damari, Gail will never grow hungry, Lord. Oh God, but he will be properly fed. Amen. Mighty God, we believe you this afternoon. Oh God, we take you at your words. Oh mighty God, and as we present little Caden, Damari, Gail into your hands today, God, we thank you for his life. We thank you, Lord God, that you have brought him into this world. Almighty oh, God, he's innocent before you. Oh God, but we also know that the enemy is going around like a roaring lion. And he's seeking whom he may devour. Oh God, so even as small as Caden is at this time, we know, God, that the devil is after him. But oh God, today we decree and we declare, God, that little Canaan, the Mary Gail, belongs to you, God. He's yours. He is in your hands. And I pray, almighty God, that you will keep him as the apple of thine eye. Oh God, let no evil befall him. Let no evil come nigh his dwelling. Oh God, I pray that he will be protected as he move around the house. Oh God, no evil, no weapon of destruction will come against this little child. But he will be one Lord who will be set apart and be protected by your hands, mighty God. 
Oh Lord, oh God, we believe you today. And when the time comes, Lord, that he will, oh God, leave the home by himself and he will be going to school. Oh God, we realize and we understand what are in the schools today. And so God, many things he will be exposed to. All kind of demons. All kind of demon possessed children. Oh God, but we come against that right now. In the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh God, and we pray Lord that he will be protected. Almighty oh God, hallelujah. Oh God, that no weapon that is formed against him. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh Lord, we pull down today every stronghold that the enemy will want to set. And we declare, Lord, that little Canaan, the Mary Gail, belongs to you. Mighty God, hallelujah. We place him into your care. We pray, Lord, that as the teachers teach, that he will learn well. Almighty oh, God, hallelujah. Oh God, that his brain will develop well and his cognitive ability will grasp what is being taught to him. He will be a stood out child. Oh God, one who will excel in school and beyond. We present him into your care today, God. Hallelujah. We believe you today because your word declared that if we ask, Lord, you shall give to us. It shall be done. And so, Lord, as, oh God, he's been presented into your care today. Oh God, he is no more controlled by elements of this world. Oh God, but he is, oh God, adopted into the family of kings and princes. Oh, mighty God. Lord, he belongs to you today. And with the authority God, that is vested in me as a minister of the gospel. Almighty oh, God, today I stand before you. Oh God, and I present little Caden, the Marigan, into your care. Oh God, that today he is no more a heathen child. Oh God, but he is one who is dedicated by thine almighty hand. God, he belongs to you today. And we present him into your care through care of the Holy Ghost. He belongs to you, God. And I pronounce a true dedication upon him. In the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. It is done today. In Jesus name. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church believe today. We want from this tender age praise God to snatch little Canaan the Mary Gale from the hands of the enemy. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God bless you, mommy and daddy. Praise God. Continue and seek to know God for yourself. God bless you. You can pick up your dedication certificate after church in the office. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so kindly, Pastor. Thank you, Mommy and Daddy. You may go up to your seats and pick up your dedication certificate subsequently. Uh, we appreciate your patience, everybody. Uh, we run a little bit longer than we normally do. But we're going to be closing our service now. We've been singing this song, uh, Sowing in the Morning, uh, Sowing Seeds of Kindness, I think. Uh, sowing in the New Time. Um, and the dewy eaves, right? And watching for the harvest and the time of reaping, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheep. Um, when we do this song, we're going to be asked Deacon to bless the table and uh, all the uh, fruits that have been taken into the house for harvest. We're going to ask a dedication, a blessing upon them. And at the end of the service, we are going to be removing them on the outside under the tent where we will do the disposal, right? So you may just want to get out of here with some of these lovely things that I hear. Um, don't leave without ensuring that you get yours, all right? Um, so we'll do all the 
the transaction outside under the tent that has been provided. So bear with us a few more minutes. You've been very patient. You've been very nice. All right. Um, let's do one verse. Uh, sowing, sowing in the morning. Just one verse. Bring it in the sheaves. And we do the refrain probably two times. Right? Okay. Everyone know that song? It's number 109 from the Banners Hymn. So, 109. So, in the So, in So, in
On behalf of the Church of God Prophecy here in David Dunn, I would like to say thank you all for coming. Shelley, it's good to see you again. Great, good to see you. And everyone else who's, who's come out today, good to see everybody. Those who've come out to support, um, you know, mother and father. Uh, it's good to have had you all. We're going to be moving the produce and the products uh, to the outside on the tent. And you should not leave without getting your share. Uh, we have some lovely things here. I've never seen Chocho looking so great. Not for a long time. Um, we have what, drops and what's that, cut cake? Toto. Toto, to -to. yes, I remember that word, Toto. -to. Some lovely salsa, banana plantain, yam, uh, sugar cane. Okay, come on guys, um, who's moving them up? We can move them now, can't we? All right, 